In this next topic, we're going to introduce you to Extensible Authentication Protocol, or EAP. Now, before we talk about EAP, we need to, to have a short discussion about 802.1x. So 802.1x is a port access protocol for protecting networks uh, via authentication. Uh, so this type of authentication is extremely useful in the Wi-Fi environment due to uh, the behavior of Wi-Fi environments. So if a Wi-Fi wi user is authenticated via 802.1x for network access, basically a virtual port is going to be open on the access point allowing communication. And if it's not successfully authorized, a virtual port isn't going to be made available and communications are going to be blocked. So there's the three basic pieces to 802.1x authentication. There's something called a supplicant. And this is a software client that, that runs on a Wi-Fi uh, workstation, uh, Wi-Fi enabled workstation. There's the authenticator, which is the Wi-Fi access point. And then there's the authentication server, which is an authentication database. And, and usually this is uh, like Radius or TACX Plus or something along that line. Now, I, I told you that to tell you this. Uh, extensible authentication protocol or EAP is used to pass the, the authentication information between the supplicant, i.e. the, the uh, workstation, and the authentication server. And so EAP actually handles and defines the authentication process. So the access point is going to act as, as an authenticator uh, and, and only a proxy is going to allow the supplicant and the authentication server to communicate. So, so now let's, let's talk a little bit about EAP. In this first slide, we have a depiction of what a typical EAP communication uh, request and response might look like coming from a supplicant over on the far left-hand side, uh, and that would be the uh, wireless-enabled workstation. And so again, uh, we talked a little bit about 802.1x. You see that at the top of the screen, and then radius over to the far right. So. Uh, basically, we're going to receive an EAP identity request, and that's going to come from the WILSI. Uh, so the uh, wireless uh, client is going to attempt to, to attach to the AP and then attempt to uh, go in and exchange information. And before it goes any deeper than that, then this particular uh, communication overview would, would uh, occur. So the EAP identity request comes in from WILSI. There's an EAP identity response that's sent back from the supplicant. Uh, and then also the, that is forwarded uh, for identity purposes to the AAA server. So the authentication authorization and account, accounting server uh, receives this information. And so the EAP request, EAP type is going to be sent back. Uh, and that's going to also be sent. So they're agreeing on the, the EAP type. And so the EAP request, EAP type, and then there's a response for that. And so they're agreeing on the EAP type. So the identity has been, been verified. And then we're going to say, well, what, which EAP are you going to use? Because there's several different flavors or options for that. And then uh, that, that is going to respond. And then basically the conversation that we're going to authenticate that conversation and uh, on each end. And if we do that appropriately, then what's going to happen is we're going to have EAP success. So we've authenticated both the supplicant uh, and the uh, server end of things and uh, that supplicant is then allowed to uh, transfer and exchange information with folks internally. Now at this point you're probably saying well gee that kind of sounded generic and there's a reason for that. Uh, EAP doesn't specify you know what type of authentication you're going to use uh, that's in there and so there are some 40 different types of EAP that you can can use and so it just basically simply defines the authentication steps and the headers required for that so EAP's going to basically separate the authentication itself from the authentication process so what EAP is doing is helping to define the authentication process but not necessarily the underlying authentication or, or authentications because it could be multiple depending on how you ha have things set up so EAP attempts to keep it as simple as possible, and in support of that, we're going to take a look at the EAP frame in this next slide. So if you look at this, in the first byte we specify, is this a request? Is this a response to a request? Is this going to be a success or a failure when they're trying to coordinate from the supplicant to the server end of things? And so uh, the next one, uh, one byte field is basically a, a match to match the request response. So if I'm saying I have an EAP type, then I expect the other side to support that EAP type 
uh, as well. And so it, does it match? There's a one byte field to indicate that. There is a total length of the packet field, which is two bytes. And then there may or may not be data depending on uh, the type of authentication method that you're using here. But this is the eat frame format for the exchange of that information we very briefly discussed in the first slide. Now there's a couple of additional technical tidbits I want to pass on before we move on to the next slide. And, and when I talk about EAP, I don't necessarily imply that we, we must be using 802.1x, but the two protocols work very well in combination together. So, so there's a reason why we talk about EAP, we talk about 802.1x, and 802.1x basically keeping that port, that virtual port closed until the authentication process has done what it needs to do. So that's the first little thing I want to tell you. And the second little thing I mentioned earlier was that the EAP flavors, the EAP types, if you will, must match on both the supplicant and the server ends. In this next slide, we talk about the EAP authentication types. So as we look at this slide, you'll see the EAP types has a little bit of a description that's there, and it's organized left to right. And the two most popular EAP types that are in use today are EAP TLS and PEEP, P-E-A-P. Uh, and go figure, the, uh, the most popular, what's coming up to be the most popular, EAP TLS, is also provides excellent Wi-Fi security, but it's also the most difficult to configure and to try to manage. So with EAP TLS, it, it's very secure. Uh, it requires a client certificate to be installed on, on the workstation. And so you've got uh, both the workstation and the server covered as well in this. Now in PEEP, the protected extensible authentication protocol, it's secure but only requires a certificate to be installed on the server side of the house. So that makes it a little bit more manageable from a uh, PKI uh, standpoint. Now EAP Fast is great if you can't enforce like strong passwords and things, you know, with the, all of the hieroglyphics and it. it has to be, you know, X amount of character, uh, but in, you don't have to, to deploy uh, certificates for that, for authentication. So EAP Fast is good for that. EAP uh, TTLS um, basically uh, uses a tunnel to get around having to deploy certificates for clients. And then there's Leap, and Leap has been around for, for quite some time. It, previously, it was like Cisco proprietary, uh, but it's been licensed for other, other vendors. And it does have a uh, strong password policy that should be enforced when you are using Leap, which would be an indication in my book that perhaps uh, Leap is not the strongest of uh, the different EAP uh, types that you could use. And so if you look at that, sure enough, over on the far right-hand side here, you know, mutual authentication, yes, I'm going to uh, mutually authenticate the client uh, the supplicant and the server. Uh, does it use a certificate? No. You know, is a cer server certificate required? No. So no, no. So, you know, again, uh, you'll give an indication there. It says, you know, medium Wi-Fi security kind of thing. And in this day and age, I think you need more than that. And on top of that, it doesn't provide any rogue AP detection either. So somebody could just walk in and set up their own AP they bought at the Home Depot and be off and running. So really what I want you to get out of this is like, well, you might be asking yourself, well, which one is best? And my favorite engineering answer is it depends. It depends on how much time and effort and expertise you have in order to implement uh, one of these EAP types. And again, with EAP T TLS being uh, the most difficult, but also offering the highest security level. And so any approach to security should basically be layers of an onion. And so you're not going to be dependent on any one single technology or approach to provide all of the security for your enterprise. It's going to be several different technologies all working together.